What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and after Apple's had a very busy year already, they've got one more product for us, and that is the Apple AirPod Max. So, as you guys might know, Apple made five new iPhones this year, as well as some new iPads and the M1 Max that were all very, very exciting, and they've still got more to release in 2021, but this is kind of like the one last thing after the already one last thing, and I've got to say, I'm very excited for it, but at the price point of $550 in the US, and after tax, over $800 in Canada, I'm really excited to review these and tell you whether or not they are worth it and if you should spend the money. And the fact that they're actually out of stock and pretty much back ordered well into next year is pretty crazy. But in some ways, I've heard some great things about them so far. But I want to just unbox it in this video, show you guys what's in the box, as well as the form factor before giving you guys an actual review. Because I know a lot of reviewers just like went ahead and opened it and didn't really talk much about it at all. So we're going to actually go ahead and test it out and look out for a follow up video. So if you guys are excited for that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and also leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions or just DM me on Instagram and I'll try to get to it. So these AirPods are available in five different colors which match the same color lineup as the iPad Air 4. And that includes a gray model, a silver, a blue, green, and a kind of pinkish color. And honestly, I believe the gray one is by far the best. And even though I kind of like the blue iPad, I feel like I don't really want to be walking around in public with a giant blue pair of headphones because these are definitely not small. And the silver one with the white mesh just doesn't really seem to go well with something I'm going to be wearing on my head every single day because it just might get a bit dirty, sweaty, and it's going to look kind of gross after a while. So personally, I was pretty set on the gray model. And this was actually supposed to come last week, but UPS just, I don't know what happened to it. So I'm actually getting it the same day as everyone else who went and ordered it. So let's just like peel off the plastic here and I feel like we've done a lot of unboxings this year and as you guys know, December has been an insanely busy month. I mean, the whole fourth quarter has just been insane. Uh, I believe we've got like, probably feels like a hundred things in the house at the moment and I have nowhere to walk, but I guess it's not a bad problem to have being able to check out a lot of tech products. But take you up the box here, um, you can see that these headphones are definitely not small by any means. But taking off the first box, you can see here are the headphones themselves, and they're definitely not small by any means. So you've got the case itself. Um, let's just lift these up and uh, set those aside. And in terms of what else is included in the box, there really isn't much, the typical Apple way. Um, you do have the USB Type-C to lightning cable, which is for charging it. And if you wanna go ahead and use it in a wired mode, then you're gonna have to buy a cable for $35. Um, there is no power brick, which I'm fine with, but I do wish they did include the cable to use it in a wired setting. So here is the AirPod Max, and it does come in this case that has already been memed. It seems like Apple likes to make cases that people make fun of, including like the iPhone 5C Crocs. Um, and honestly, it doesn't look great, but I do think um, I do think it's fine. Uh, I was originally wondering why they didn't include a case that would allow these to fold flat or something, but. After seeing it in person, I do feel like this is still relatively portable, which is very important because I do travel quite a bit. Here are the headphones themselves. They're all made of extremely good materials. The top band has like this kind of mesh flex material. It is lined with silicone and all of the arms are metal. And this is the case that can actually put it into a low power mode when you're not using it. Otherwise, if you set them aside, after two hours, they will automatically go into the low power mode, but I don't believe there's a way just to shut them off. So just taking off this packaging, uh, we're just gonna lift these AirPods here and gonna set that bra aside. And um, here's a cup that we're gonna remove as well. And as you can probably see, my phone has detected them right away, so I'm just going to hit connect. And within a few seconds, we all should be good to go and the AirPods Max are ready to use. And that is obviously one of the biggest features as to why this headphone costs a lot of money aside the sound quality. It's an ecosystem product. And if you guys wanna buy into a system that works seamlessly with Apple devices specifically, then you're gonna to have to buy it from Apple. There you have it. So that is it for the setup process itself. And as you see my widget there, it does show that the battery life is 80%. 
So as you can probably tell, these are definitely not the smallest pair of headphones. And for the most part, they do feel quite light, but it is a full metal finish on the outside, which is nice because it is durable and it's just very clean in its design. But yeah, these are a pretty large unit and the drivers built in are 40 millimeters and are custom designed by Apple. And we know Apple has done a really good job in sound this year. They've done it in their MacBook line. The AirPods obviously do sound pretty good. And also the HomePod mini was very impressive in terms of the sound quality that it was able to deliver at a pretty small form factor. Some of the other sound features include sound equalization, active noise cancellation, transparency mode, and also spatial audio, which is something that has been talked about quite a bit with the iOS update and some of the features that Apple had been trying to implement into their products and what they can support this year. And when they first announced that, we kind of expected that a studio headphone like this was going to come out, just not this soon. I'm also really excited to see how the Dolby 5.1, 7.1, and Atmos sound experience is with these pair of headphones, and just how good the spatial and audio technology and optimization that Apple has done to a pair of headphones that are far more expensive than their competitors. In terms of processing, it is powered by an H1 chip on each side, and there's also the little sensor on the inside that allows you to take the headphones off and it will automatically pause the music, and when you put it on, it will start again where you left off. But this is definitely not the first headphone to have that because the Sony WX100 M4s, whatever they're called, that I checked out this year and seem to be very popular have that feature as well. When it comes to the buttons, you have one on the top here that pretty much emulates the digital crown. And that is able to allow you to adjust the um, volume very specifically, and also the play, pause, and skip, all that kind of stuff. And if you hold it, it'll activate Siri, which is something that I don't really use. The button over here is for active noise cancellation and transparency mode, so you can quickly toggle between that. But there isn't any way to just like turn them off once and for all. And I feel like that is because Apple wants you to kind of have that seamless experience where you can pick them up and put them on and start using them right away without having to go through that extra step. There is a low power mode that is obviously kind of like a standby, so it doesn't drain the power when you're not using it. But I would like if there's an option on your phone to be able to set it to like go on standby after 15 minutes or something. And through the gyroscopes, when you pick it up, it will start the activation right away, just like it would after it's been put into low power mode automatically. From first impressions, the mesh ear cups feel really, really good. They have like this nice texture to it that doesn't feel too wide in terms of the pores of a typical mesh piece, like you would see on the Apple HomePod, which is what I was expecting but it is also very flexible and it feels like it will breathe quite well. I've gotta go ahead and test this out and see how they really feel, but with the mesh on the top and from the sides, it definitely seems like Apple has thought of this. And the fact that the outside is aluminum is probably good for heat dissipation as well. Um, in terms of the different positions, here is the hinge for it. So you can um, kind of control that and pivot it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my head and see how they feel. So it says left and right side on the inside. And they have now activated. And honestly, they do feel really, really light. And on paper, they are heavier than the competitor's headphones and I can definitely feel that pressure and seal on the ear. But I do like the way the headband feels and I am gonna have to test these out for at least a couple hours before I can really give you my impressions in the full review. Unfortunately, these do not have sweat or water resistance like some of the competitors have, but at the weight, I don't think you're gonna wanna wear these on a run or anything, so, I mean, it's not really a huge issue, but it would have been nice to see anyways. On the battery life side of things, you're able to get up to 20 hours of general listening. It is gonna be customized that is gonna be very much factored by the way you use them, the volume you have it at, and also the noise cancellation setting. But if you go ahead and charge these for five minutes, you can get one and a half hours of listening, which is pretty decent. The active noise cancellation is also assisted by nine microphones that are built in that will go ahead and test your surroundings. And also for the spatial audio experience, try to build a scene that is realistic and immersive. So just to give you like a 30 second, so just to give you like a 30 second sound impression after listening to a couple songs and putting them on for the first time, I've got to say they do sound pretty good. It has like a nice space to it and I find that the bass is definitely there but not like overwhelming and I'm sure some people who really like that bass would like to turn it up a little bit more. But I think it does have like a good level of stereo separation. The highs are very clear, the acoustics definitely do ring out and that has kind of been the characteristic of what Apple has done in a lot of their audio products. They focus a lot on like the spatial experience and the stereo separation and everything and 
It is a relatively balanced pair of headphones, but I'm definitely gonna have to test these out a little bit more. But first impressions when it comes to sound, uh, the price point is still relatively high, but I do think they sound pretty solid. So for my first impressions, how do I think these look? And I've got to say, they don't look bad, but they definitely don't look great or stylish either. And at the price point, I feel like there's two types of customers. There's people who want a great set of headphones, and there's also people who are willing to spend the money to get something that is very, very stylish. And there are offerings on the market from like Master and Dynamic and stuff that make great looking headphones. And a lot of times the style aspect is very important, as you would have seen in the Louis Vuitton Master Dynamic wireless earbuds that we did do a video on a while back. Back. I think it is a very minimal look that is very Apple. The metal is just very clean, but it definitely isn't the smallest. And I mean, with society, when the AirPods first came out, everybody hated on them. And now pretty much everyone seems to have a pair. And I feel like these could be like that in the future as well. But it does seem a bit like an SE model design where it goes with like the pastel color scheme. And in a premium model, you would expect it to have like a gloss finish with like some glass and more chrome and everything. So. I don't know, I don't think they can make a model that is more expensive or even more premium than this one right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and test the sound because that is what I'm most excited for. And as I mentioned, I've got a full review coming and if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe, drop a like, and I'll see you all in the next one.